Where's the skill cap video? It, oh, here we go. Fine, fair, reasonable match. Okay, all right. We've watched this. Bellular idiots. These guys don't know what the hell they're talking about. I don't think they even play the game. We got to see what's going on. We got a skill cap video. Guys, this is the real video. Okay, this is what's really going on. These are the diehard WoW PvP fans. We'll see what they have to say about the game and what is going on here. Okay, we're going to take a look and see. World of Warcraft has more players than it did in Legion. Dragonflight has offered more content than ever before, while fixing some of the biggest issues from previous expansions. But oh my god, you guys remember this? <laughs> oh my god. The locked gear behind Conquest and Arena rating? Do you guys remember that bullshit? That was insane. They made it even worse to gear a new character. That was the worst shit ever. It was unbelievable. You couldn't even, you would no way you could catch up. It was nuts. They even got the sweating Pepe right there on the side. This is it. Expansions. But if WoW is doing so well, why does PvP suddenly feel so dead? Of course, the player base is now fractured more than ever. But you could join a solo shuffle queue right now and watch this entire video before getting a pop. And okay, right there, guys. That, that was two insane reasons, right? There's like six versions of WoW out. This guy is playing Wrath. This guy is playing... SOD. This guy is playing Plunderstorm. And this guy on the left is playing Retail. So this is four different versions of the game right here we're looking at. That's probably a big deal. Not including all the other ones, so okay. But you could join a solo shuffle queue right now and watch this entire video before getting time in queue five years, 11 months, 12 misdemeanors, 16 eternities, and a $13,000 fee. Huh? It's true. A pop. And even if you're an experienced player, arena can feel overwhelming. We can't even imagine what it feels like to be a new player in 2024. Add ons have become part of the metagame itself. And dude, look at this screen. Oh my god. What is going on here? What are we even looking at? Jesus, D look how different this looked from the from the other screen. It's just buttons everywhere. Everything is everywhere. Like everywhere, all over the fucking place. This is why people are against add-ons. Look at the screen. It didn't used to look like this, guys. That's why, that's why it, it was not like this. Now it's like this. Classes now have more damage, mobility, and micro CC than any other point in WoW's history. How did this happen? And more importantly, what can we do to fix it? This video is going to focus on Solo Shuffle, which has become the most popular PvP mode by far, but not without a few consequences. From class balance to queue times, incentives, and more, Solo Shuffle might have changed PvP forever, and some players are scared for the future. But we think there are a few simple solutions that- Mom, turn that off! Turn that off! Sorry. All right. Yeah, guys, we- Well, okay. Soon? Soon? All right, let's watch this, let's watch this. Just in the game itself that could make PvP flourish in the war within. So join us as we take a deeper dive into class design in Dragonflight and some of the ways PvP could be improved for the future. All right, what do we got? Everywhere what do we got? You, look, you will see one basic complaint about PvP. Arena is too overwhelming, which makes add-ons practically required. Oh yeah, and queue times are long, but more on that later. Anyway, let's Just be honest, Arena that. does feel hard these days and it's hard to pinpoint why, but add-ons have become one solution. This is what Sidu's UI looked like during. Bro, we just we just look at Sidu's buttons. Look at what's going on. Looks like he's playing a whole different game. Look at that. Are you kidding me? Didn't we just look at what his shit looked like now? Yeah, guys, this is a lot simpler. A lot less shit going on here, right? A lot less info being shown. But this was this was even then this was still hard to watch. Well, maybe with nowadays, what people have been exposed to in Arena for so long, maybe this is more watchable now because, I mean, we're more exposed to this kind of shit because, yeah, this is, I mean, like, yeah, this is nuts. So this is the old school. This is old school WoW right here, right? No no real key, no real cooldowns being tracked. Warlords of Drainer. And this is what his UI looks like now. It seems like half of his screen is covered with weak auras, cooldown trackers, nameplates, and more. Without a doubt, add-ons have become infinitely more complex in the past three expansions, turning a game that is supposed to feel alive and immersive into your grandma's Internet Explorer back in 2007. Solo Shuffle is just one reason why UIs got to this point. Without communication, you need a million different alerts letting you know what's going on. But we think the issue is multiple layers deep. The problem is- I mean, yeah, this happened before Solo Shuffle, for sure. This, this was happening before Solo Shuffle, right? I mean, look, like, look at this. There's 
It had to be before Soul Shuffle. Starts letting you know what's going on, but we think the issue is multiple layers deep. The problem isn't Solo Shuffle alone, but also class design, and more specifically, power creep. As WoW gets older and more complex, classes get updated and start to become way more complicated every single expansion. This isn't just unique to WoW, and happens in almost every single game. PvP has seen power creep in multiple places, and mobility is the most obvious. Ever since the introduction of Demon Hunters and Legion, there has been an arms race in the way characters move. This same expansion is when Paladins would get Divine Steed, and some melee would even get extended range on their attacks. Fast forward to Dragonflight, and a spec like Outlaw Rogue has Shadow Step, Grappling Hook, Sprint with 100% move speed, 3 extra yards on every attack, and even an attack that charges them to their target. The best part? Almost all of this can have its cooldown lowered just by spending combo points. In fact, mobility is so ridiculous that a simple macro can make it look like rogues are cheating. Just watch this player after they Shadow Step Venruki. <laughs> yeah! In case if you, you guys it. if you guys missed that oh here it goes it, here it is again watch the, the rogue. rogue kicks and then instantly hooks back having nearly 100 yeah. percent uptime while landing cc yeah I mean, next this... expansion death knights will be getting their own version of divine steed allowing them to mount in combat right now melee is winning the race but we've seen glimpses of what can happen when casters get their own power creep but why should you care about character movement as Core A Gaming pointed out, any buff to mobility is a buff to the entire toolkit. It means doing better damage since you have an easier time sticking on target, and this even applies to healers. You will do more healing if you have more movement. Being faster means it's easier to cross the map and even avoid CC. Obviously, moving faster is also a buff to survivability because it's harder to actually get hit. Look at this. Look at this. Look how clean the screen is. Right here. Nothing on the screen. I had a... Uh... In my old peekaboo like pvp montages i was like looking at it the other day and i was like look at this this was the, i don't know what expansion this is in i i have the same ui i i have a i have no add-ons showing i guess i guess i was practicing for turns but this is what the game looked like when you just logged in you just you just played like this and everyone thought that this was super unwatchable back in the day but if we got even close to, even remotely close to this, I feel like it would it would make more sense, right? Top dono, recent dono, yeah. I mean, like this is just. I had a, I have Gladius on. That was it. There's no other add-ons. It was just it was just one one thing. I I think this is mop, yeah. Because you knew the other people were were just as confused as you. They they don't they don't have many add-ons on. Yeah, and now now it's now it's just insane. Don't see this. If you are a new player trying to pick up a caster, the melee mobility creep is going to be a nightmare. It will feel like you never have the chance to actually get away. Even if you manage to get a few seconds of breathing room, it probably won't last for long, and now you need to deal with the next power creep. Micro CC. This is something many players misunderstand. Is this Wizard Micro CC is not Polymorph, Cyclone, Sap, or even Hammer of Justice. No, we're talking about something else. Micro CC is the smaller, shorter CC that is just there to add more disruption. It's not Sap, but Gouge. It's not the six second freezing trap, no, that's the CC. The micro CC is the three second silence from Spider Venom. It's the fact that even if a monk misses their kick, they can still ring a piece to stop a cast. The metagame in 2024 is dictated by smaller micro disruptions in gameplay. Everyone's goal in arena is to make sure the enemy team can't control their character. And it's gotten to the point where even a spell like Intimidating Shout was used as a stun effect, with Absturge getting controlled for almost three seconds by a fear while getting trained, eventually leading to a the fuck am I looking at? What, what, how is this idiot dying here? What the hell is going on here? Character. And it's gotten to the point where even a spell like oh Intimidating Shout was used as a stun effect, with Absturge oh getting controlled. God, look at this guy, man. Like, how are you? What's going on? Almost three seconds by a fear while getting trained, eventually leading to elimination from the AWC. Before the talent tree revamp, many CC spells used to share talent slots, but now many of these choices are available all at once. In Dragonflight, Micro CC is what wins games. You're never 3 2 one your spells in a coordinated effort, but instead just denying your opponent from playing the game while you blast them with damage. This has even led to a completely backwards playstyle for some classes. Ironically, despite having one of the strongest crowd control spells in the game, mages don't really have any Micro CC, which means spending most games blinking backwards and being a spectator, hoping their Demon Hunter will win the game. Patch 10.1 included nerfs to the duration of almost every CC in the game. Dude, can you imagine if they didn't nerf the CC? Oh my god. What would WoW actually look like? I'm like, uh, maybe no one would actually play the game if they didn't even nerf the CC. Every single CC was like nerfed, right? Like that was insane. Holy shit. You would actually get CC'd for like a, a, an entire minute. That'd be ridiculous.
game, which unintended. That's the problem with old WoW expansions too, is now, now you actually are CC'd infinitely. You can't do anything. Intentionally shifted the balance in favor of micro CC. What's the point in overextending for a six second polymorph while losing out on damage when your infinite mobility rogue could just gouge at almost zero damage loss? We will talk about damage in a second, but because burst DPS is so high, there isn't a need for clean setups. As long as you can just prevent someone from controlling their character, it doesn't matter how sloppy you play. Micro CC is also the reason why precog exists in the first place. With mobility creep and almost every class having an interrupt, there aren't many windows to actually cast. Watch me try and land a single Cyclone on a Demon Hunter who won't even use their kick. Between two stuns, an incap, glimpse, and shadow melt, it's not even possible to cast a single time without losing most of my HP. Because of this, <laughs> most casters have the majority- <laughs> Oh god, I, I just, yeah, you just know, bro, it's like, if you've ever tried to play a caster and you're trying to cast on a Demon Hunter, you just know it feels terrible. Like, and that never feels good to be trying to cast on a Demon Hunter who's not CC'd. Literally takes a miracle to get it, they have to completely mess uh, something up. Hunter, and he's not using kick. Use kick. Between two stuns, this is one guy. Glimpse and shadow melt. It's not even possible to cast a single time without losing most of my HP. Because of this, most casters have the majority of their damage coming from instant cast spells. And it's Damn. no surprise that specs with the best instant cast damage are the ones who gravitate towards the S tier. The power creep of mobility and micro CC might seem where this story ends, but we're not finished yet. Weak auras has become ubiquitous in PvP starting in Shadowlands, because during the early expansion, burst damage was at its peak. With a buff to the crit modifier, players were getting one shot like never before, and even though crit damage would be nerfed in early Dragonflight, there was another dramatic shift in class design that had been boiling over in the background, as now not only was burst damage high, but now every player was taking damage at once. This was a trend that had started in Legion. Class design was moving away from single target abilities in favor what of damage. What expansion is this? What What are we even... Look at this, guys. Look how different the game... I can't even tell what WoW this is. We're level 110. What, what, what was that? Is Ven about to triple kill these people or something? I, uh, Legion. Automatically cleave. Classes like mages were abandoning CC altogether in order to just AoE down every player at once. Why waste time casting Polymorph on the healer when you can just press Arcane Barrage to wipe out the whole team? Combine this with Micro CC and you have a metagame based around splash damage, especially with the introduction of Evoker, whose signature ability as a mechanic borrowed directly from a raid boss. In the past, Frost DK was defined by its AoE setups, getting a huge damage spike with Pillar of Frost and then cleaving everyone down at once. But oh now, it feels like most classes can do the same thing. Just crank up the damage meters and toss in a few stuns and suddenly you've learned how to PvP. So now in Dragonflight, we have a metagame defined by power creep with mobility, micro CC, and AoE damage. Classes and comps that once felt unique have converged into a single win condition, which is to simply do as much damage as possible, abusing a million different modifiers to inflate the damage of a single spell. There's less of a need for precise setups and calculated play, and more often than not, the only thing that matters is how much damage you can do and how quickly you can respond to a weak aura. At the time of writing this video, one of the most dominant comps on the 3v3 ladder is Rhett Paladin, Arms Warrior, and Fistweaver Monk. Yeah, it dominates with pure numbers, overwhelming healers with raw damage. This guy knows more than those other people? Well, yeah, you can tell someone who plays PvP for 20 years versus someone who's never played it in their life. Do you hear the difference? We're actually seeing what's going on in the game, what's happening, why it's happened, played through many different variations, all the variations of the game. I mean, it's just, it's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. And micro CC. And that's mostly how the average solo shuffle game is played, since many classes simply have enough damage to kill through healing, especially during dampening. These days, balance is less about mechanics and more about numbers. How much DPS can you do and how little will you take? So how did we get to this point in class design? In WoW, there's been a growing tension between class balance and class identity. In the past, everyone was defined by unique mechanics. Rogues had their stuns, hunters had their pets, and frost DKs still kinda sucked. Having a unique class identity is cool and all, but it doesn't take long to realize that some mechanics are really nice to have, especially in PvP. Warriors used to be defined by Mortal Strike and were one of the few classes to actually have this mechanic, but as it turns out, reducing healing in PvP is pretty damn good. So good that these days almost every single melee in the game has Mortal Strike. And even Warlocks have it too, but it yeah. gets even more ridiculous. Demon Hunter have a Mortal Strike. Two stuns. One of them is AoE, by the way. What more? Oh yeah, an instant cast Polymorph or Cyclone, an AoE Fear, a magic dispel for some reason, and they basically have speed hacks. Demon Hunter is a pretty extreme example, but you get the point. Mechanics that were once unique are now passed around like a joint at a Snoop Dogg concert. 
This is known as homogenization, which causes classes to lose their identity over time in the sake of game balance. There is a private server called Project Ascension where any player can use any ability. In this game, there are no classes. Obviously, we're not at this point, but you can start to see the extreme end of homogenization. It might seem cool, but it takes away the identity of playing a unique class. The cool part about playing a rogue is being a tactician, but these days more and more specs are becoming brawlers, even sub-rogues, who at one point were topping damage with rupture, all while <laughs> ab-targeting to kill the entire team. Now, we don't want to go Great pointing times. fingers, but PvE and especially Mythic Plus were a big part of homogenization. Mythic Plus. Oh, so it's PvE's fault on why the game is like this now. It's all the PvE's fault. That's what I just heard right there, and I'm looking at it right here. Look at this, guys. That's insane. It's all come down to AoE damage, this and that, AoE healing. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that's what that's what happened. Okay. So it's not even a PvP problem. It's a, it's a PvE problem. That's what happened. This is by far the most popular game mode in Season 3, with almost 300,000 runs per day, compared to Solo Shuffle, which doesn't even scrape that amount per week. The okay, so 300,000 keys per day, 20,000 shuffles a week. So even if we did try to skew the numbers, uh, you know, that's... Okay, all right. The Mythic Plus player base is almost 10 times the size of PvP, so it kind of makes sense what direction Blizzard might lean to when figuring out class design. To do big pulls in Mythic Plus, you need your group to quickly dodge mechanics, all while having enough kicks and CCs to stop multiple casts in a row. Bro, I mean, PvE is also extremely hard to watch on Twitch, too. I mean, I think PvE is really confusing to look at. Have you guys ever watched, like, Mythic Key streams or, like, these MDI races? I feel like it's extremely hard to tell what the fuck's going on. There, there's like, it's like add on overload times 10 compared to PvP. Uh, I feel like it's crazy. Boring to watch, huh? Well, I guess we're all kind of PvP players, but. Mm, mobility and lots of CC. This sounds... That many people play Mythic Plus, the LFG doesn't reflect it? Sounds familiar. Mythic Plus also has DPS checks every few minutes, with pressure points based around big pulls and boss timers, which means you need big burst damage in very specific moments, and on trash, you're going to need to spam your AoE stops while pumping out as much AoE damage as possible. Okay, so lots of CC, high mobility, cleavy burst damage. Jeez, this really reminds me of something else. Oh yeah, those bosses in Mythic Plus have these big one-shots. That means every class needs to have strong defensives, and if they die without using them, well, that's their healer's fault. I wonder where I've heard this all before. We don't think it's a massive conspiracy to say PvE might have had a massive effect on class identity and class balance. Because it's no accident that the mobility and AoE damage shift we saw in Legion was a direct result of a new- That's it guys, PvE ruined WoW. That's what happened. Proves it right there. New game mode that just happened to be released at that time, where dungeons need to be cleared as fast as possible by pulling multiple mobs at once. And now, these power creeps have fully spilled over into PvP, becoming even more ample- Wait, wait, Mythic Plus got introduced? We don't think it's a massive conspiracy When did Mythic say. Plus come out? It, before Legion, was there a WAD? So what did PvEers do all day? Had challenge mode? What the f- I had no idea. I don't even know when Mythic Plus came out. I can't- I don't even know. Used to PvP? <laughs> Farm mounts? Wait, so there you couldn't even play the game if you were a pve -er? Holy shit, I didn't even know that. A PvE might have had a massive effect on class identity and class balance. Because it's no accident that the mobility and AoE damage shift we saw in Legion was a direct result of a new game mode that just happened to be released at that time, where dungeons need to be cleared as fast as possible by pulling multiple mobs at once. And now, these power creeps have fully spilled over into PvP, okay. becoming even more amplified thanks to Solo Shuffle, a game mode where raw damage reigns supreme. The add-on problem that many people talk about wouldn't be such an issue if the game weren't so power crap. You wouldn't need 10 different alerts letting you know the enemy team popped their Giga AoE offensive. Now, here's where things get a bit touchy. There's a lot of people who enjoy Solo Shuffle for a few good reasons. Let's face it, the WoW community is getting older and some of us have busy lives. Maybe our friends have moved on from WoW and we don't want to sit in LFG. For many players, Solo Shuffle is really the only way to participate in ranked PvP. It's clear that many players want to just press play and get immediately into the action. Other players are more pessimistic, arguing that Solo Shuffle is literally killing PvP. One thing they will say is that Solo Shuffle gameplay doesn't feel like real arena. To them, Solo Shuffle is the fast food of PvP. It's addicting and gives you what you instantly want, but maybe it's not the healthiest. 
and right now, it's the only thing people want to eat. There is a growing sentiment that Arena has started to feel more like PvE. In Solo Shuffle, where you can't really coordinate crowd control or even damage itself, it makes sense that simply cleaving the enemy team down and stopping casts like Mythic Plus would become the emerging playstyle. But this has even crept into 3v3 itself, where even a comp like RMP can just win with raw numbers. But with the convenience of Solo Shuffle, participation in other brackets has gone down dramatically. RBGs are especially dire, with daily games sometimes being less than 200. And with the potential introduction of BG Blitz as a rated mode, RBG participation could become entirely extinct in the future. Currently, arena rewards and other brackets are becoming harder and harder to get. Since participation is a big factor in MMR, less people playing means less rating inflation, and less inflation means a confusing sense of progression from season to season. Vinruki recently tweeted that his- Damn, yeah, I mean, this is- how do, how, do, how do they stop all this? Is there even a way to go back? Can we even go back? I don't even know if that's, like, possible. Like, I... Guys, I think Solo Shuffle was good for the game. I, I think it was. They just... They just didn't do the MMR right for the healers. They just need to, they need to make the healers the high prio. They got to flip that. The, the DPS should be the people suffering, I think. Because there's clearly infinite more DPS. I'm not sure how they can ever try to even replace or, or stop any of this. But this tweet right here from Ben, he's like, My alt R Shaman peaked in Season 1 at 2700. And he's been playing R Shaman all this time, right? Now, now that he's a lot better at Shaman, he's stuck at 22 to 2300. Oh, he's at 2100 now, when he was 600 rating higher than last season. Even though he's better now than he was before. So it's, it's, it just fries people, playing like that. He incentivizes PvP. I mean, I think they just have to make a... If we're all going to play a... Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, PvE years had to do some shit to get some gear. Yeah, that that's pretty. That is pretty tough. I I don't know if it, I I just man if they could just fix solo shuffle, and make it pop, so they would have to just give healers like crazy MMR and none of these nonsense lobbies of losing rating, losing MMR. Like I don't think people really care if their healers are subpar and shuffle. They just want to actually play the game. The rating system and having static rewards tied to moving goalposts is a huge issue. Uh, there was crazy. We always. Uh, what I can really take away is that Bellular, those guys are confused. They are heavily lost. Oh my god. Let's see what's His going on here. Shaman is 600 rating lower than it was in Season 1, despite the fact that he feels better playing the spec. This confusing sense of progression kills motivation for many players and keeps them more attached to a single bracket. So how can we get people to play other brackets more without completely making Solo Shuffle obsolete? Hmm. Surely there has got to be a system that encourages people to participate in PvP while also attracting new players. Hmm. If there's one thing players love more than standing around Elwyn, it's looking cool while doing it. I mean, that's why we play the game, right? We know for a fact that cosmetics are highly coveted rewards for many players. And apparently, some people are willing to play Fortnite WoW Edition just to get a pirate transmog. A trading post type system specific to PvP seems like an obvious way to motivate participation in other brackets. Imagine a log that sent you to win 2v2, 3v3, or RBGs, resetting every month with new rewards. These rewards could be anything, like black market auction house containers. They could even be old elite sets, but probably reskinned. Healers could even get their own unique rewards, like bonus black market containers. Oh or a God. discount code for therapy, and a two-week vacation to get away from every demon hunter. Anything that gets more healers participating means faster queue times for everyone else. The goal is to make sure players can enjoy everything WoW has to offer by offering incentives to play multiple brackets. As long as new players have a motivating reason to engage in PvP, and as long as we can make sure everyone is trying every bracket... Bro, could you imagine if this would have looked like? Holy shit, that would be insane. PvP will naturally be in a better place. With more players, there could be a greater incentive to rethink class design. We have to admit that Mythic Plus isn't going anywhere, and designers will probably prioritize it over PvP for the time being, but maybe there is a solution here too. Even though the talent trees were meant to be evergreen systems, maybe it's time for PvP and PvE to finally have completely different talent trees. Some classes need dramatic reworks in PvP. Frost Mage is just one example. It's suffering from button bloat, with not one, not two, but three different and easy to counter burst spells. To fix this, the entire spec would need to be rebuilt from the ground up in PvP. But instead of class tuning these days, it's more about adjusting PvP modifiers up and down. The entire philosophy behind the original PvP talent system was to make sure classes could get major reworks without affecting PvE balance and vice versa. <laughs> the issues we discussed today are- Dude, like, this sounds so unrealistic. I mean, how- guys, how are they gonna remake the whole spec? Like, how is that- how is that even possible? How could they- what, are they gonna re redo this on, like, every class and spec? How could that even happen? Especially on a new, um... On a new expansion? I, I don't I don't even know. Like how 
being another thinking human is way harder than a scripted fight. People just want to succeed and go to bed. People always be a side thing. Well, yeah, PvP, there's a lot of things with PvP about that, but yeah, there, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of these things are annoying and they are a hassle, but Solo Shuffle really shook a lot of the stuff up too because you find a lot of random shit and play a lot of random things. I, I, I swear, if they just made Solo Shuffle playable, uh, people would be much happier. They would be much happier. If you, if you didn't have to wait an hour or two hours to play the game, then a lot of this stuff you can just brush under the rug. Because because you can play, but there's nothing worse than sitting there for 45 minutes and then someone leaves and then you just can't even play the game or you have a bad game, and it's like, dude, no one has time for that shit. So that maybe maybe they just got to go the route of making healers just gain infinite rating in solo shuffle. That's what it is, and then everyone will have to deal with like people trying to play healer and maybe you know, all the best healers and that kind of makes the game quality a bit lower. But it's still just like, yeah, that's already how it is anyway. So it's like, who even knows? And bloat with not one not two but three the wait time and shuffle is because there's not enough healers playing the game and the main reason healers don't play the game is because of how bad the uh mmr system is and rating gain is for healers so yeah basically like you, if you try to play a healer you, and, and like you just get you get trolled on healer or levers it like you, you should the way the mmr works it's super terrible for healers like Healers should like always be able to gain rating and gain MMR almost. It should be very hard to lose as a healer. That's how they should do it. And then like the what healers suffer from right now in solo shuffle, DPS players should be dealing with because there's infinite DPS players. It's insane. The rampant botting, yeah, that's a big problem too. Every game has a ton of cheaters too. It's nuts. Yeah, like going four two and lost MMR is insane, right? Like every every healer is complaining about. It. That's why a lot of them don't play it. Because they can't, it, it's it's just, just stupid. Like, I mean, 1800 on Disc Priest, played five games, three matches, a person left. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. It's different and easy to counter burst spells. To fix this, the entire spec would need to be rebuilt from the ground up in PvP. But yeah, I don't know how they can rebuild every spec. It's more about adjusting PvP modifiers up and down. The entire philosophy behind the original PvP talent system was to make sure classes could get major reworks without affecting PvE balance and vice versa. The issues we discussed today are just one of many affecting PvPers. We could have discussed other problems too, like there you go, cat. and the fact that there are potentially... How has Blizzard not done anything about it? I don't know. I don't know how Blizzard has not done shit about Shuffle. I really, I thought Shuffle was sick. I have a lot of fun playing Shuffle, but... Yeah, the main problem with it is literally the queue time. I, I literally think all these issues, anything anyone's complaining about or cried about, it's done if you can just play. No one cares. Like People can make new classes, make new specs, and, and Shuffle is so good for that. Shuffle's even better because of the class balance mattering less because you're playing all these bad comps, all these random comps, all this random shit, and everyone is forced to play with each other. So that's even better. Way too many arena maps these days with many weird balancing issues. When players were discussing a solo game mode three years ago, the intention was to make sure there was a way to instantly queue and get into the action. But since solo shuffle lasts six rounds, there is a slow churn of players caused by congestion, which is why queue times can last so long for DPS. Four hours in queue, bro. Since you're just waiting for someone else's six rounds to end. Button Damn, should they just make it like three rounds? I don't know. I don't even know what they should do. Two rounds? Four rounds? Like what? Maybe play what? You think one round? Man, I wouldn't even mind one round. You know what I'm saying? Like, cue it like an actual uh, game? I don't know. Bloat is its own issue, and many players think that rotations are becoming too complicated. We know that PvP combat can feel engaging even with seven abilities, but you don't even have to take things that far. Between Arena 1, 2, 3 macros, talent swaps, and more, it's common to have over 40 keybinds in PvP, which is quite daunting as a new player. Even though players fought back pruning during Warlords of Draenor, a bunch of new hero talents on the way could mean WoW is getting even more complicated and oh, could benefit man. from a return to more simplicity. Arena is already complicated enough, and if we want to attract new players to PvP, it shouldn't feel like you need an Adderall prescription and an encyclopedia just to play. It's always been our goal at Skillcap to make- Damn. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, can they make the game simpler? Is that possible? Guys, that was that. That was a reaction to the Skillcap thing. We watched uh, the Asm reaction to Bellular. That was insane. Good video, guys. That's That was that. That was that right there, man.